The Canola School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by BSF Canada and Invigor Hybrid Canola. Hey, Kara Ustros here with realagriculture.com. I recently had the opportunity to talk with Leighton Blaschko, who's a senior technical specialist with BASF. Leighton and I caught up on a canola school episode about some of the things you're going to want to keep in mind when it comes to the beast that is club root and what you can do as far as mitigative strategies go when it comes to controlling club root on your farm. Check out the conversation now. Well, yeah, I think we need to think about club root in uh, any time you're growing canola and anywhere that you're growing canola. And for me, the two things that are most important are sanitation and avoidance. You know, this reminds me eerily of uh, what we're dealing with with the pandemic we're in right now as well. But this time it's for the crop. For, uh, for club root, really, in terms of sanitation, it's not only washing or sanitizing or pressure washing equipment, but it might be simple things like knocking the lumps of soil off of your equipment as you're pulling out of a field, just so that you minimize the spread of any soil. Um, as well, stopping soil from moving, so managing the amount of tillage you do on your farm. Those kind of things can all help in, in avoiding club root and help in maintaining or minimizing the spread of club root. Now, in terms of avoidance, you want to, um, there's a couple of things that you need to do. Of course, scouting is very important to know whether you even have club root. Yes, we're here in central Alberta and uh, club root is quite uh, prevalent in a lot of this area, but there's parts of Western Canada where it's on the leading edge right now and it's just spreading there. So I've got some uh, canola stubble here that I would say you need to do what I'm doing and pull out these uh, plants after harvest or as harvest approach approaches, you pull out a lot of plants and uh, really scout your fields intensively. I say a hundred plants is what you need to pull in a field to look at, at least a hundred plants. Do you want to talk about scouting and how you can kind of remove the biases? You know, lots of times people go to one part of the field and they'll pull out a hundred plants. Do you want to talk about the importance of maybe going across the whole field? Yeah, I think um, in terms of scouting, for, for the disease, you really, we're trying to find the disease. We're not looking to do a survey of the entire landscape. The best place to find club root is near the approach or near the field entrances. So in this case, I would say you really want to probably hone in on that area where equipment enters, where you're entering and exiting the field, and that's where you're most likely to find club root. And, and what about the spread of club root? Is it, is it going any more rapidly in the last couple of years or what sorts of things are we at with that? All of the provincial governments, uh, each of the three provinces in Western Canada, have people that are uh, producing maps. And uh, so whether it's Alberta, Saskatchewan or Manitoba, they have maps that are showing the progression or the spread of club root. And we know that uh, if you watch them progress from year to year to year, uh, of course Alberta has the longest history in this and it's just gotten to an area where it's it certainly is spreading more and more every year. Um, so, but in Saskatchewan and Manitoba you're seeing that as well. So we, we definitely know that it is spreading. Now, if, now there's a whole bunch of things we can be doing, but if there was one thing, you know, if you'd say to a farmer, I just, I need you to do this one thing to stop the spread of, uh, I almost want to say the spread of COVID, but <laughs> the spread of club root, what, what would it be? For, for me, I think that uh, the, the best management practice is going to be proper scouting, especially if you're in one of these areas where club root hasn't taken a, a foothold yet really doing intense scouting. When I used to hear about scouting, I would go to the think, okay, you're gonna go just like you're scouting normally. You go out to a patch, you pull out five or, or an area of a field, you pull five or six plants, look at the roots, move to a little bit, of, little bit away and do the same thing. But when I was out with some of the Canola Council of Canada uh, agronomists here a couple of years ago and the University of Alberta, they were showing me that, you know, if you go into a field and you're pulling a hundred plants or more than a hundred plants, that's when you'll find that one that has the very early stages. So you really, if you are trying to not find it, 
whole few plants. If you really do want to find it, which I think we want to know an early sign, that's when you want to pull a lot of plants and that will lead you to make proper decisions as far as clubbert resistant genetics uh, that you choose for your farm. When you say whether you want to find it or not find it, it has me thinking, um, there used to be a bit of a stigma with club root. Do you think it's still there? Are people, you know, they see it, are they still hesitant to report it? I think that uh, a lot of people, especially in central Alberta, we've been dealing with it for such a long time that I really think the stigma is gone. I don't think it's uh, as much of a, um, a negative, if you will. Um, other parts of the prairies where it's more new, I think that might still be there a little bit. Okay, is there anything else you'd like to add? Well, I think the, the last part that I wanted to add is just the piece about choosing club root resistant genetics. We know that, um, you know, at, at a, up until now, there hasn't been enough club root resistant genetic seed available for all of the acres across Western Canada. Um, now, seed production is ramping up with all the different seed companies. So we're at a place where we're able to have more of those acres covered, not have as limited seed, uh, seed for, for club root, with club root resistance in it. And you need to make a decision if you're going to A, choose clubbit resistant genetics, and then B, what the genetics would be. We would say that you need to start with a first generation clubbit resistance genetics. And then after you've put in two cycles of that crop, so hopefully that's six years because a rotation of one canola crop in three years would be the maximum that we would recommend then you would want to switch to another source or to your second generation club root genetics. So really pay attention to what your source of resistance is, what hybrids are most suitable for your area, and make the proper decision based on, uh, on that. Okay, great. Thank you very much. Thank you.